This week in Anatomy and Physiology Lab, we'll be completing Exercise 29, Blood. Throughout the lab, we'll be studying the different components that make up blood and performing various hematologic tests. Blood is classified as a type of connective tissue because it consists of cells within a matrix. The non-living fluid matrix is the plasma, and the cells in cell fragments are the formed elements. More than 100 different substances are dissolved or suspended in plasma, which is over 90% water. These include nutrients, gases, hormones, various wastes, proteins, and electrolytes. The composition of blood is dynamic, constantly changing as cells remove or add substances to the blood. There are three main types of formed elements present in blood. Most numerous are the erythrocytes, or red blood cells, which contain hemoglobin molecules that transport oxygen and carbon dioxide. Leukocytes, or white blood cells, are a part of the body's immune system and play a role in defending our body from infectious agents and other foreign materials. Platelets function in blood clot formation. Formed elements make up about 45% of whole blood, while plasma accounts for the remaining 55%. In this exercise, we'll study plasma and formed elements of blood and conduct various hematologic tests. These activities include examining the formed elements of blood using the right stain procedure, conducting a total white blood cell count, conducting a hematocrit test, determining hemoglobin concentration with a hemoglobinometer, and blood typing. The right stain procedure allows us to examine the red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets that make up blood. First, create a blood smear by dragging a drop of blood across your slide and letting it dry completely. We'll demonstrate this technique in lab. After your blood smear dries completely, cover it with 5 to 10 drops of right stain. Let the stain sit for 4 minutes before adding an equal amount of distilled water. Let the right stain distilled water mixture sit for an additional 5 minutes. Rinse your slide, and then flood it again with distilled water. Stand the slide on its long edge and allow it to dry completely before viewing your blood smear under the microscope. The right stain allows you to observe erythrocytes, leukocytes, and platelets under the microscope. You can also study blood by performing total blood cell counts. Total blood cell counts allow you to determine the total number of red blood cells or white blood cells within the blood. With this information, you can identify potential abnormalities such as leukocytosis, leukemia, polycythemia, and anemia. The hematocrit test allows you to determine the volume of red blood cells in blood and is routinely performed when anemia is suspected. By centrifuging a blood sample, you'll separate it into three distinct layers based on density. Plasma, which is the least dense component of blood, will sit on top of the other layers. Red blood cells, the most dense component of blood, will rest at the bottom. Sandwiched between the plasma and red blood cell layers is the thin, buffy coat, made up of white blood cells and platelets. White blood cells and platelets make up less than 1% of whole blood. After centrifuging the blood sample, you can then use a chart to determine the hematocrit. The hematocrit is reported in terms of red blood cell volume, with a normal value for males around 47 and females around 42. Each year, around 4.5 million lives are saved by blood transfusions. There are very specific ways in which blood types must be matched for a safe transfusion. The right blood transfusion can mean the difference between life and death. There are four major blood groups, A, B, a, B, and O. These major blood groups are determined by two antigens, A and B, and whether or not they are present on the surface of the red blood cells. If you have only A antigens on your red blood cells, you have type A blood. If you have only B antigens on the surface of your red blood cells, you have type B blood. If both A and B antigens are present on your red blood cells, you have type AB blood. If you don't have any antigens on your red blood cells, you have type O blood. 
In addition to the antigens on the surface of your red blood cells, you have antibodies found within your blood plasma. We have opposite antibodies in relation to our antigens. These antibodies will trigger an immune response if they come into contact with any foreign antigens. For example, type A blood contains anti-B antibodies. As their name suggests, these anti-B antibodies will attack any red blood cells that have B antigens on their surface. People with type A blood can only receive blood from donors with type A blood or type O blood because type B and type AB blood both contain B antigens, which the anti-B antibodies will attack and destroy. Type B blood contains anti-A antibodies. These anti-A antibodies will attack any red blood cells that have A antigens on their surface. People with type B blood can only receive blood from donors without A antigens on their red blood cells, such as type B blood or type O blood. Type AB blood contains no antibodies. Because there are no antibodies to attack antigens, type AB blood is the universal recipient. On the other hand, type O blood contains both anti-A and anti-B antibodies. These antibodies will attack any red blood cells with A or B antigens. Because of this, those with type O blood can only receive type O blood. We've talked about A, B, AB, and O blood types, but there's another factor that plays into blood typing. In addition to the A and B antigens, there's a protein called the Rh factor. The Rh factor can either be present on the red blood cell, creating a positive blood type, or absent, creating a negative blood type. After considering the Rh factor, we are presented with the eight most common blood types. A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative, O positive, O negative, AB positive, and AB negative. The Rh factor must also be considered during blood transfusions. The rule of thumb is that a person with a positive Rh factor is able to receive blood from those with either a positive or negative Rh factor. A person with a negative Rh factor can only receive blood from someone who also has Rh negative blood. For example, Someone with A-positive blood can receive A-positive, A-negative, O-positive, or O-negative blood. A person with B-negative blood can only receive B-negative or O-negative blood. Now that we've discussed antigens, antibodies, and the Rh factor, you'll be able to determine the right blood type for a patient receiving a blood transfusion. Do you know your blood type? You'll be determining your blood type in lab using blood typing cards. If you have any questions or concerns, be sure to reach out to your lab instructor.